gathering tonight in Jerusalem. As we prepare our minds and our hearts, let us imagine that we are there viewing the events of the upper room. We see Jesus with his disciples. We hear their words. We feel the passion and the care that is there. But something strange is happening. Strange because as Leonardo da Vinci, who painted the portrait that is depicted tonight, had picked up and had created a unique idea, one that had startled all the disciples when they heard a message and heard the words. Is it me, Lord? Is it I? How can I do this? This is preposterous. Who would even think of doing such a thing? And then Judas pulled away from Jesus, and as he did, he turned over the salt shaker, and clutching in his hand the bag of coins that he had been paid him for the betrayal. What were the words that startled everyone? These words. One of you will betray me. I am Thaddeus. In John's Gospel, you may know me as Jude. I became a follower of Jesus because I liked the way he walked so freely, so boldly and bravely amongst all kinds of people. I thought to myself, now here is the kind of leader that we need. Good common sense. A lover of his fellow countrymen. And, and so devoted to his cause. My problem was I didn't understand his cause. I thought that by preparing for the coming kingdom of God, we would restore the power and the glory that is Israel. How wrong I was. Jesus told us, love your enemies. Return good for evil. And he never tried to get us riled up. And he would only reveal himself as Lord to those who were closest to him. It was, it was frustrating to me. One day I asked him, Lord, why don't you reveal yourself to the entire world? Do you know what he told me? He said, I will only reveal myself to those who love me and those who obey me. I was so disappointed. Yet his words rang truth into my ears. It was only after his death that I came to understand that I had asked him to reveal his power to me. And what he revealed to me instead was the power of love. It became my life's work to share that power of love and the healing and the life and the grace and the mercy that is Jesus Christ. How can anyone betray Him? I am James the Lesser, son of Alphaeus and Mary. History does not tell much of my life. There's even confusion about who I am and how closely I'm related to Jesus. Whether I was his brother or not seems unimportant. What is important is that when Jesus called on me to be his disciple, I answered his call. The lessons I learned while with him, they changed my life completely. When Jesus was crucified on that cross, I felt as if a part of me died there with him. But when he appeared in the upper room, I was filled with new life, a new spirit. So much so that on the day of Pentecost, I was able to go preach the good news with great joy and happiness. Later in life, I became the leader of the Church of Jerusalem. I was sometimes referred to as the Bishop of Jerusalem. 
My faith was a vital part of my life. But by declaring my faith to all of Jerusalem from the temple ramparts, I angered the scribes and the Pharisees. In their anger, they threw me to the ground. But the fall did not kill me. So they stoned me. When my master died, he called on God to forgive his murderers. How could I do anything less? I'm glad I remained faithful to the master to the very end. You see, as a Christian, it was my desire to show that Jesus came to reconcile man to man and man to God. I would never, could never betray him. Like Zacchaeus, I was a tax collector. Some call me Levi, some call me Matthew, the publican. It was said that there was no class of man more hated than tax collectors, but that did not stop this man named Jesus. In fact, he came to my office one day and said, follow me. There was no way I could refuse. So I left everything and followed him. I threw him a great feast in my home with many of his disciples and some of my business partners. When the Pharisees complained about Jesus eating with sinners and eating with publicans, <coughs> Jesus simply said, those who are well have no need for a doctor. Those who are sick do. From then I repented and I followed him. The ancient scriptures became a way of life for me. And I was convinced that Jesus was the fulfillment of every prophecy about the coming Messiah. I first preached the good news in Judea to my own countrymen. It was said that there is never a, it was said that there's never a man more suited to the job than I. But in the hands of Jesus Christ, I became the first man to write down his teachings. I became a missionary to gospel in every way possible. But no one received more rewards than I. I am Simon the Zealot. Before Jesus called me, I belonged to a group of bloodthirsty, hot headed group known as the Revolutionary as the Zealots. I hated Rome for enslaving my country, or God for turning his back on us. My Jewish brothers didn't seem to mind that they were enslaved in their own kingdom. But one day, while I was at the Sea of Tiberias, I met Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. He told me of another kind of kingdom, a kingdom where the heart reigned true, and love reigned supreme, and the kingdom of God. Since that day, my attitude towards Rome, my attitude towards Rome, towards my fellow man has changed. My inner tensions have been relieved. I'm no longer uptight. I recognized in him the hope that he betrayed me. I couldn't help but follow him because he was the greatest man that I'd ever known. Unconditionally and completely, I served him. To think his thoughts, to love as he loves, to obey as he obeys, and to serve as he serves. After the cross, I was still there. I dedicated my ways to the life of Christ. There is no breach between people that cannot be healed by the love of Christ. And I must ask you, when you love, could you betray the one that loved you first? Simon Peter. I was a fisherman when my brother Andrew brought me to Jesus. 
Jesus looked at me and said, Your name shall be Cephas, meaning rock or stone. Maybe he already saw in me a faith and steadfastness for which I so yearn, which would take so long to grow. I was so headstrong. My impulsive spirit caused me to do and say many things for which I am now sorry. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when the mob came after Jesus, I drew my sword to protect him and cut off the ear of a slave. Jesus was furious. Put your sword back in his sheath, he demanded. For those who live by the sword will die by the sword. I fled in shame and terror. Yes, it was I who boasted that I would never forsake Jesus. And then in the face of danger, I cursed and denied Him. Not once or twice, three times, I denied Him. But when Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? My voice was strong and sure. You are Christ, Son of the living God, I exclaimed. He said, yes. And you are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. After Jesus ascended into heaven, I became one of the leaders in the church of Jerusalem. On the day of Pentecost, our Lord spoke through me, and we converted 3,000 souls. My life ended at the age of 75. I died in the city of Rome, crucified as a martyr for Christ. Knowing that I did not deserve to resemble my Lord in His death, I asked to die with my head down. You see, before I met Jesus, my life was like a shifting sand. In Him, I found my true foundation. Three times I denied Him. But would I betray Him? My name is Nathaniel, but some call me Bartholomew. It was my brother Philip who first told me he had found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth? Does anything good ever come from Nazareth? I asked. But Philip ignored my sarcasm and insisted that I go with him. As we approached, Jesus looked at me and said, here comes an honest man, a true son of Israel. Instantly I was filled with elation. I yelled, Rabbi, you truly are the Son of God. In my heart, I knew he was the Christ and that I needed him. For the next three years, I followed Jesus faithfully as a disciple. After his death and ascension, I work with the other disciples around Jerusalem. The true manner of my death is not recorded. Some say I was crucified. Some say I was beheaded. Others say I was skinned alive. The way I died is not important. What is important is that I gladly gave my life for Jesus. My captors may destroy my earthly ministry. They may torture my earthly body, but they can never destroy my soul that lives on forever in the kingdom of heaven. How could anyone betray my Lord? I am Andrew. I'm not particularly gifted. Just an average man like any one of you. I was a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee when I met John the Baptist. His challenging message moved me to follow him to the day Jesus appeared. And I knew at once I'd found the Messiah. I hurried to find my brother Simon Peter and I said to him, We found a Messiah. Peter also believed and we followed this master, leaving behind our families and our fishing nets to become fishers of men. On the day when Jesus fed the 5,000, it was I who drew attention to the lad with only five loaves and two fish. How incredible to feed so many so little. Jesus filled our lives with many, many miracles. My life ended in Patre, 
There, the Roman proconsul, outraged by my refusal to offer a sacrifice to pagan gods, had me scourged and crucified. I died a martyr for Christ. I served my life for his cause, but I received so much more than I could ever give. I am Philip, Nathaniel's brother. I first came to Bethany to hear John the Baptist speak. While I was there, I met Jesus. I found him to be an interesting person and a powerful speaker. It moved me so much that I had to go tell my brother Nathaniel about him. For many months we traveled up and down to Palestine. I saw the lame walk, the blind made to see. I even saw a dead person come back to life. I soon realized that Jesus was the true Messiah, but I still had much to learn. When Jesus told us that God was our Heavenly Father, it was beyond my understanding. It was I that asked. Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, After all I have done and said, do, do you not know that I am in the Father, and that He is in me? Anyone who sees me also sees the Father. For months I had watched Jesus at work, but I did not understand. I saw, but did not see, but yet I demanded more proof. My sense of failure, I soon realized that how great, how great a person Jesus was, but after his ascension, I became a missionary for the rest of my life for Christ. If I had my life to live it over again, I would gladly serve Jesus Christ and even more and be even more faithful than the first time. Jesus 
caused me to be the first martyr of the disciples. When King Harold Agrippa started persecuting the church, I was beheaded with a sword, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus. But he said, this cup that I drink, you shall drink also. <coughs> Even though I had to pay the extreme sacrifice, being martyred for Christ, I never doubted that Jesus was my king. And now, he who taught us the way of love is to be betrayed by someone whom he loves. Who can it be? Who? I am Thomas. I'm also known as Didymus, the twin. I bet you don't know me by that. No, you know me as Doubting Thomas. <laughs> Even though I was a man of wavering faith, my devotion to Jesus was always sincere. Like him, I was a carpenter, so naturally I felt closer to him because of my work. I'm a realist, and it confused and discouraged me to see the criticism of Jesus growing. In fact, we disciples, we were almost too afraid to go with Jesus to Jerusalem that last time. I got so frustrated, so frustrated with our indecision, I blurted out to them, let's go with him, even to die. And now, now it makes me shudder to think of how prophetic those words were. We were all together at Passover, but the day was dark and oppressive, and it matched our mood, especially when Jesus told us that he'd be leaving. I said to him, I said, Master, we don't know where you're going. How are we going to find a way? And then he revealed his purpose when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Any man who wants to go to the Father must go through me. I grew desolate after the crucifixion. I stayed away from my brother's disciples for a while. But when I returned to the upper room, they said he was risen. He was risen. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Not until I put my fingers inside the holes of his hand and placed my hands into his side. But then I saw him, and he spoke my name, and I had to believe. This man was my Lord and my God. I rejoice today that I believe in Christ, and I followed him. I died a martyr for my beliefs, and I would gladly do it again. I am John, brother of James. He has spoken of us in spite of our quick tempers and foolish impulsiveness. <coughs> Jesus loved us dearly. Leaving our families to follow him <coughs> was the greatest decision of our lives. Now I am the youngest of the twelve and my time with Jesus was exhilarating. I saw with my own eyes as many miracles. And how his sincere love and his deep compassion for others drew hundreds of people to him. On the night our master was betrayed, he served the first communion. I sat at the table at his right hand side. He spoke of betrayal, of being taken from us. And he seemed to be in some private agony. And none of us could understand him. Taken from us? I shall never forget that terrible day they crucified our Lord. The others fled, but I could not leave him. He asked me to care for his mother, and it was the only thing I could do for him. Can you imagine our excitement when the women came from the tomb to say it was empty and Jesus had risen? I outran Peter to the tomb to see for myself it was true. Now later in my life, I was banished to the Isle of Patmos 
But it was there I was given the visions of the end days and wrote them in the book of Revelation. The closing years of my life, I lived in Ephesus. I was the last of the twelve to bear earthly witness of Jesus' love and his miracles. And I lived to see the end of the first century. I am Judas Iscariot. I am the man who betrayed the Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Yes. I betrayed him with a kiss. I received my calling by the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus came to me, and I thought he would establish an earthly kingdom and give me a prominent position in it. I was the original treasurer for the twelve disciples. My focus was not spiritual or scriptural, but financial. Someone had to do that, and that was my call. <coughs> I was always looking to improve the finances. When Mary went to anoint Jesus' feet with oil, I said, stop, brothers. We need to take this ointment. We can sell it for 300 shillings and use that money to help the poor. The disciples didn't understand. They didn't understand me. But Jesus did. He saw me. Or maybe he saw through me. He came to us and said, I have chosen 12 of you. And one of you is the devil. I looked at my brothers. Who could it be? It certainly wasn't me. But when Jesus came to me and said, What you are going to do, do it quickly. How could he doubt me? I wanted revenge. I went to the soldiers. I brought them down where Jesus was at prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I kissed him. I was angry. He called me friend. His words of love, they pierced my heart. I realized I was the traitor. I had made a tragic mistake. The devil entered into my life. And sin consumed me. And my tragic mistake is known to all the world. What you were going to do quickly.